So Joe Biden officially launched his campaign at a rally. Um, this is going to give you an idea of what his strategy will be moving forward. So let's take a look and then we'll come back and I'll break it down. Barack Obama was an extraordinary man. I watched up close his character, courage, and vision. He was a president our children could and did look up to. Me. economic recovery from the depths of the greatest financial crisis short of a depression that we ever faced in our history. And that's a big reason, big reason we now have had 10 years of uninterrupted economic growth. And we need it. We need to find three Republicans in the United States Senate to get it passed. It was my job to find them, persuade them. I did. They did, and the country did better than it has before. One more, one more aside. I know presidents not like to take credit for the economy, the economic growth, and the low unemployment numbers. But just look at the facts, not the alternative facts. <laughs> President Trump hurt and hurt an economy from Obama Biden administration that was given to him. Just like he inherited everything else in his life. Yeah. Just, like, just like everything else he's been given in his life, he's in the process of squandering that as well. Yeah. The Recovery Act helps save this nation from economic growing. To get, to get down, to get down to, we have to get the work done. We had to bring two Republicans along. If we hadn't done it, we could have had another Great Depression or economic ruin. So folks, working together matters. It matters. So the main theme of his rally, and he kept coming back to this, and he kept hammering away on it, is unity. He wants to put that front and center. He wants unity to be his main thing. And it it's apparent that he means unity in the sense of Democrats and Republicans working together and also unity in the sense that he's against Donald Trump's bigotry and xenophobia. So, you know, we should all come together, our white brothers and sisters, our black brothers and sisters, um, Asian, Muslim, uh, Jewish, whatever, all different groups can come together and it's all about unity. And, you know, I can't help but come to the same conclusion that I've come to with other candidates who we've looked into on the Democratic side. Uh, and that conclusion is he's really stuck in a previous generation. And you can tell the old school candidates because the old school candidates have themes like this. Themes of togetherness, let's hold hands and sing Kumbaya and unify. And, and the new school candidates, the ones who are actually going to be... Um, you know, I think some of the last ones standing are the ones who are framing this race and framing the problem in the country as the have and the have nots, the elite versus the average Joes and Janes. That's a much more potent and poignant political message that lands because the only time you can really get away with using a, you know, a unity uh, argument is when the country's actually doing pretty well. If everybody's doing well, then yeah, you're much less likely to actually even see manifestations of, you know, bigotry and, and, and things of that nature. When economically people are well off, you have a natural decrease in all these uh, social and societal ills. But the thing that uh, Joe Biden doesn't know 
is that things are not hunky-dory in this country. People are really, really, really struggling. And you wouldn't know that from his speech now, would you? So, he talks about unity, and he argues pretty clearly and in a straightforward fashion, I will be the continuation of President Obama's legacy. I was in the White House with Obama, now I want to be president, and if you like what happened in those years, vote for me. That is massively, massively disconnected from the mood of the country. If Obama was as good as Joe Biden thinks he was, Donald Trump wouldn't have gotten elected. Because you know what? Hillary Clinton ran on that exact same strategy. The strategy of, I will be the continuation of the Obama legacy. Trump running on, make America great again, and Hillary saying, America is already great. So in a weird way, it's the Democrats becoming the conservative party with that argument. Conservative, you know, as defined, don't change stuff too much. Don't change it too much. Well, that's what that is. That's what that argument is. Don't change it too much. Hey, I thought we had a pretty sweet thing going with Obama, so let's go in that direction. It ain't gonna work, Joe. It ain't gonna work. Now, I, I actually am not in the crowd that thinks Obama was all negative, full stop. No, I think that's actually, um, that's just a not thoughtful way of looking at his presidency. And I did a long breakdown of Obama's presidency. Uh, I think I titled the segment Obama's Report Card or something like that. So go check that out, and I'll give a detailed analysis. Hey, here are all the good things he did, here are all the bad things he did, here's his final grade. And you do find plenty on both sides, but listen, the main criticism of Obama is he was elected at a time when we needed a transformative figure in FDR 2.0 in many ways, and he didn't give us that. He just gave us Bill Clinton 2.0. He gave us neoliberal centrism, and in many ways, he was an effective manager of the status quo. When what really needed to be done is you scrap the status quo, uh, question some of the fundamental assumptions and roots of the system, change it, and then fix our country uh, in, a, in a serious way. And he didn't do that. So for Joe Biden to run on this, again, I'm perpetually amazed at how unempirical people like this are. Because we have run the experiment, guys. We ran the experiment. What happened? The Democrats lost like a thousand seats running on this uh, centrist, neoliberal, technocratic, wonky strategy. And of course, Hillary Clinton lost to Donald Trump using this exact same strategy. And they just go right back. No, nope, this is what the political playbook says I should uh, do. So this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to run. Guys, throw out the the textbook, throw out the, the rule book. Donald Trump blew up that system. There are no rules anymore. Donald Trump didn't even do a general election pivot. Like, that's one of the things that you can't question. Like, the strategists think, well, obviously, the general election pivot, of course, that's what you have to do. Trump didn't even pivot. <laughs> he was saying the same shit in the general that he was saying in the, in the primary, and he won. So this idea of, like, and then the other thing is, to the extent they believe that they should change anything, their argument is, well, Trump won and he's a right winger, so if anything, we gotta move further right. Oh no, you don't get it! You don't get it, it's the populism, stupid. Now, on the right, they're fake populists, and also they mix in a, a heaping dose of bigotry and xenophobia with their fake populism. But on the left, you just have to not be a bigot and be a genuine populist, and that's how you win. And it seems like Joe Biden doesn't get it, but that's, that's actually a good thing. Now. The flip side, though, is that Joe Biden, like it or not, and of course I don't like it, but it's the truth, he actually is a good debater. He destroyed Paul Ryan, ripped his head off, and spit down his neck. Um, he destroyed Sarah Palin, obviously, but that's a low-hanging fruit. That's not difficult. But I do think he would handle uh, Trump somewhat reasonably well uh, in a debate. Um, sometimes I think he would walk into some goofy traps and, you know, argue like you just heard here, the status quo was actually wonderful. 
And I don't think that that's a good thing in, in, from a substantive perspective, but I think from a stylistic perspective, Uncle Joe comes across as a straight shooter, even though he's really not a straight shooter. Um, now, the final points I'll make real quick are, he's bragging about the Recovery Act. Again, largely left behind regular people. And if you don't understand why it's not a good idea to run on that Obama legacy and why it's not a good idea to concede, as he's doing here, the economy's great. That's his concession. His concession is, hey, the economy's great, but it's not because of Trump, it's because of me and it's because of uh, Barack Obama. That is so... The reality is the exact opposite, man. It's still half of workers in this country that make $30,000 a year or less. It's still 78% of Americans that live paycheck to paycheck. It's still tens of millions of Americans without health insurance. It's still medical bills are one of the top causes of bankruptcies. Um, it's still credit card debt and student loan debt. People are in it up to their eyeballs. So you can't, to argue that, that just shows that he's been, you know, pampered. Not like regular people. Obviously he's been, he's vice president, he's been in Washington D.C. since roughly 1876. So he's disconnected and he thinks, I could just argue that the economy's good. I'll concede that to Trump, but I'll say it's good because us. Oh, God damn it. That's just a terrible argument. That's just a really bad argument. Um, but then he also says, at the same time he talks about unity in his rally, he also turns around and brags about passing Obamacare with zero Republican votes. To which I respond, if you got zero Republican votes, why didn't you guys just pass Medicare for all? You had a supermajority, so you could have got whatever healthcare reform through that you wanted to, and you picked a right-wing plan. You picked the Heritage Foundation plan, the Mitt Romney plan, the Newt Gingrich plan, the plan that keeps the for-profit health insurance companies intact. Why didn't you just pass Medicare for all? At the very least, why didn't you pass a public option? So that's not something to brag about. That's actually a, a, an argument to be embarrassed about. On top of it, just contradicts your whole thing. of Unity! Yes, unity! Remember when we destroyed Republicans and got no Republican votes? So it's a contradiction, okay, but putting aside the contradiction, it's embarrassing because that means you should have gotten Medicare for all. And that means at the very least you should have gotten a public option. And I know what he'd say, he'd fire back and say, But the blue dogs! Oh, the blue dogs are gonna stop us! Oh. Are they a hurdle? Yes. Is it insurmountable? Fuck no. And this is why you need a president who knows strategically how to crack skulls. And that, that's a big uh, point and, and a big thing that's not discussed in politics enough is like even if you have the right philosophy well how are you going to get it implemented and if you don't know how to twist arms you don't know how to play politics you don't know how to throw around your weight and use your popularity to your advantage you don't know how to harness the will of the people well then you suck at this and joe biden is well removed from that not only does he not want to use that stuff strategically he doesn't even agree with the fundamental goals that we're pushing for so, now listen, having said all that, as of right now, he is the front runner. We covered a poll that I thought was the most accurate poll I've seen to this point. Um, it had Biden up by about eight on Bernie. Uh, there are some polls that have him up like 20 or 30 points. I think those are absolutely absurd and ridiculous. And usually when you look into the methodology, it really oversamples older voters. So I do think the, the, a more accurate reflection of the race is Biden by about eight points right now. Um, so it really just is on young people across the board to get out there and let this older generation know we're done with your goofy nonsense, your tweaks around the edges when our system is burning down. But there it is. He's officially launched his campaign and he's going to try the Hillary Clinton 2.0 strategy. Disastrous.